morning, we are going to focus on communication. Um, so just a couple of um, points from the slide here. Um, if you could keep yourselves on mute, please do use the chat box though. It will be really interesting to hear your thoughts, ideas and experiences. We are recording this session, um, so it will be available for you to, um, to see again later or to pass on to your colleagues too. So anyone registered will be able to, to view this later. Um, but we are going to focus on communication. It's a really, really essential skill. And we, we focus a lot of time on developing our technical knowledge and practicing and rehearsing those technical skills to improve them. And I think the same consideration should be given to some of these other skills and in particular communication. So for this session, I'm not gonna go through any particular models or theorists. Um, I'm just gonna share with you some observations, some experiences and some things which you might want to consider all around this topic of communication and building this skill. So we're gonna look at how do you be a good communicator? How, how do you, what, what skill is that? What do I need to do? How can I improve how I deliver a message? We're also going to look at how are you a good recipient? So we're gonna focus on being the recipient and how that is such an essential part of communication that we should also be focusing attention on to make sure that we can do it well. And along the way, I'm gonna share a few tips and tricks with you. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about reflection. So why is communication important and why are we talking about it in terms of the role in finance? Well, things have changed. We are no longer as accountants, the back office bean counter. Technology has really changed the activities and the tasks that we do. And now at a much, much earlier point in our career, can we expect to be in front of clients or in front of other teams within our organization? So the role has changed and we need to make sure that we have those skills to deliver in this role. I believe that if you can master communication, if you can get good at it, it really is a stepping stone to elevating your career. It can bring opportunities to you. It can enable you to build relationships with people, people internally and people externally. Those people that you're building those relationships with, they may be your next opportunity they may be your future client. So communication is really important to building our careers, building our businesses, creating opportunities for ourselves. So I would like to share with you a reason why I got into accounting. So at 14 years old, I decided I was gonna be an accountant and I achieved that, I did. Um, and then my career has taken different paths and here I am talking to you guys about communication. But this is my dad. Um, he is pretty cool. He's playing here in his band just before the pandemic hit. Um, but my dad is a self-employed builder. It's, all, it's what he's always done. And what I really remember when I was young was that he would come home from meetings with his accountant every year and he would moan. He would say things like, I just spent the last hour listening to someone talking a different language to me. Why can't they tell me something that means something to me? He'd have his accounts in front of him and he'd be sort of thrusting them on the table at the dinner table talking about his frustration. And I've paid all this money for this. It means nothing to me. And that really, really made me think about being an accountant. And so I decided to do it. I decided to do GCSE accounts and A-level accounts so that I would be able to help my dad understand, which turned out very good for me. So I'm very pleased that that was what happened. I think that's always stayed with me that as accountants with finance knowledge, 
we have that knowledge, we understand it, but the people that we're communicating to don't necessarily understand what we're saying. So we need to make sure that we can communicate in a way that's appropriate, that's understandable, and that's useful. So we're gonna look at how can we be good communicators? And this is just a few, a few tips, a few ideas, and a few thoughts. A good communicator is a person who is able to convey and exchange information, news or ideas. So here are some thoughts. I believe that we should put in effort to the preparation of communication. So communication could be face-to-face, -face, it could be over the phone, it could be something like this. It could be in a meeting, it could be a text message. We have lots of different mediums in which we can communicate with other people. And whichever one we're going to use, I think that we should put in time to the preparation. So first of all, what do we want from this exchange of communication? And what does the recipient want? We should set our objectives. How can we simplify? How can we tell a story? How can we give me meaning to the information we're conveying? So how can we add value? I think we should decide that in advance. Now, this is my children. And just really to demonstrate a point, I'm going to point out how different they are in terms of communication. Now, my daughter, she needs cold, hard facts, absolutely straight up. If you try to dress something up into a story, she's infuriated and she lets you know. So no story, cold, hard facts when I'm communicating with my daughter. My son, on the other hand, is a completely different beast. My son, can I can only give him one message at a time. There's no point in time to tell him three things in one text message or one conversation. It has to just be one key thing that I'm getting across. And I have to tell it in a story. If I tell him straight up, it's in one ear, out the other, it's forgotten. I think we should always be considering the recipient of our message. What's gonna work for them? What's their knowledge? What's their background? How are they going to understand? Just to demonstrate the point further, my husband, dogs added for cuteness. My husband, he, he can be a challenge in terms of communication in that he just doesn't listen. I have to make sure that he's listening. So I have to ask him to stop what he's doing. I have to tell him to look at me. I have to ask him questions so he has to respond in order to make sure that I've got my message across. Now, I know these different ways of communicating with these people because I've gone through experiences to get to the point where I know what works. We don't necessarily have that with everyone that we're communicating with on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to find out ways to understand our audience. Can we look at past communications with them? Can we do a bit of research into that person or those people? Can we speak to other people about them first as part of our preparation? So set objectives, identify how we can add value and think about our audience as part of our preparation. So how should we communicate to these people? This is just part of it. These things as part of our preparation are really important. But how do we decide the mode, the method, the medium in which we're going to deliver a message? How many people am I delivering to? Am I delivering to a group, to a crowd, to an individual? A telephone call to an individual might be perfectly appropriate but we might need a meeting or a conference or an email if it's going to a larger group of people. So select what's going to be the best method to send that message to those recipients or recipient. Do I need feedback? Do I need immediate feedback? Or do I need considered feedback? So email is very good at allowing a considered feedback, a telephone call conversation, face-to-face -face meeting, that immediate feedback can come through. 
What do I need? What's going to work best? How much information do I need to send? Is it just a couple of points? Maybe I can get that across in 60 words in a text message. Maybe I need to send a whole load of information and emails are really good for that. We can send a huge volume of attachments with it. So when deciding these, these things that I need to get across, they can all help us to decide which medium is going to work best. If I've got a group of people, do I want to encourage discussion between them? If I want everyone to interact, then an email may not be the best thing because we end up with a reply all and dozens of emails sitting in our inbox. Maybe I'm better to arrange a call, a conference, an online virtual meeting, get everyone together so that discussion can take place. So a little bit of homework for you. Um, I said I would mention reflection. Something which I think is really good is to consider what, what's, what do we see as being good in terms of communication? Learn from other people who do it well. So at some point today, spend a few minutes and think about three famous people who are good at communicating. How do they do it? Can you pick up anything, any trip, tips or tricks that you could utilize? Maybe think of three people that, not famous, but people you interact with on a regular basis. Why are they good at communicating? What do you respect in the way in which they communicate? Can you learn from them? And reflection. I will pick up on this 321 a little bit later, but reflection is about pausing, stopping, looking at what you've done and identifying where you can improve. So perhaps you've you've run your first meeting, or maybe you run meetings regularly and you've never taken the time to really think about how effective they are. Think back at something you've done and think what went well, what didn't go so well, what could I improve and what could I take forward to next time? Developing your communication skills is a journey and that reflection should certainly be part of it. So my top tips, um, clarity with your message, make sure you're clear in your mind what your message is. Think about the objectives, your objectives and the recipient's objectives from that communication. Anticipate reactions, be prepared, be prepared for questions, be prepared to need to adapt your style if you don't know how that audience is going to react. Plan your communication. If necessary, tell a story, add value, to that message you're trying to communicate across, value in terms of what the recipient needs and know your audience, know what's gonna work and try and anticipate what's gonna be appropriate for them to get value out of your message. So I said, we're gonna look at being the communicator, but also being the recipient. Now, I think that being the recipient is a really, really important role. And in finance, we will deal with people in different departments, different areas of the organization with different roles, both internal and external. And we need to be able to be a good recipient to ensure that they get their message across to us and that we're able to take on board what's being sent to us. So how do you be a good recipient? You need to think about what do they need from you? Do they just need you to absorb the information? Do they need you to add to that information? Or do they need you to react and respond? Be ready for it. Being the recipient is not just about listening with your ears, it's about looking at the entire message that's being sent to you. So does the body language tie up to what's being said? Are there any non-verbal clues, non-verbal communication that you can use to enhance what you're hearing or to perhaps ask questions and identify the true meaning of a message? Have you been sent information in advance? Is there stuff for you to read, to absorb? Can you be prepared for that communication? Can you be prepared to be the recipient? If you've read the information that's been sent to you, then that might mean you get greater meaning 
when that conversation or that meeting takes place. If you've read that information in advance, it might stop you asking the questions that are unnecessary and you won't railroad that conversation or that meeting somewhere where it shouldn't be going. So listen. I want to look at listen in a little bit more detail. Listen, not about the verb, not about doing it. I want to look at listen in a little bit more detail. So how are we a good recipient? We're a good recipient if we listen. So if we look interested, maintain eye contact. And I know that is harder with what's been going on recently where a lot of communication has taken place um, via Zoom or other online sort of meetings. Maintaining eye contact is a little bit more difficult, but you can often tell when people are reading emails, not paying attention. So give it your full attention, have your cameras on. It makes that ability to be able to deliver a message much easier when you can see people's faces. So be that recipient that has your camera on. Inquire, ask questions, check your understanding, paraphrase back to whoever's communicating to you. Don't make assumptions, ask questions if you need to. Stay on target. So making sure that you're not asking questions that you should have read the answer to and information that was sent earlier. Stay on target that you understand what the objective of that communication is. Maybe set that out in advance. Take notes, take notes to help you concentrate, to help you focus, and also to enable you to perhaps ask questions later for areas that don't get answered. Evaluate the whole message we mentioned just now about body language. It's more than just hearing the words that are being said. I think sometimes with emails, we can take emails in the wrong way. Sometimes the way in which someone has written it, the recipient then absorbs that message in a slightly different way. Can you stop, think, how did they mean that to come across? Am I taking that in a defensive, negative way? Naturally, as human beings, we like to be quite negative in the way that we read things or we see things. So sometimes we just need to stop and think about that. Evaluate that whole message. Neutralize our feelings. So try to take any bias out of that meeting or that communication. Listen to actually what's being said. Don't make assumptions. Ask questions if you need to. So be a good recipient. Something else that you may have heard of is active listening. Active listening as the recipient really does help us to be, to be good, to be effective, to really encourage that person who's communicating with us. Show someone that you are listening and you can do that by paraphrasing what they've said to you, repeating things back to them, checking your understanding by asking questions, showing someone that you've appreciated their feelings and their emotions around what it is that they're trying to tell you. So perhaps saying, yeah, I can understand why that's frustrated you. So show them that you understand and encourage, encourage them with questions, encourage them with body language, encouraging that person to continue with that communication, with passing that information over to you. So very, very briefly, really, just uh, an overview, some thoughts and some ideas. We looked at how do we effectively communicate, being clear, having clarity, setting objectives, know your audience, anticipate their reactions and plan the medium that you're going to use. How many people, how much information? Do I need feedback? Do I need a discussion? Being the recipient, listen. So all of those things that are really about making that a more effective exchange of information and actively listening. And just to pick back up on reflection, reflection is a really useful tool. It's something that we can use to consciously develop 
ourselves. It's part of our own personal development. So reflecting on how things went. So if you've had a meeting, if you've been part of a call, however, it, part of a conversation, something that's happened, afterwards stop and just think about it. Think about what went well. Identify three things that went well. See if you can identify two things that went less well. And see if there's one action that you can take from that. This three, two, one approach for any kind of skills development is really, really useful. So working as part of a team, perhaps dealing with difficult situations, whenever we've had an experience, if we can reflect on it and see what we can take from it to the future, that can be really useful, really powerful. So I did have one other slide, which I think we do have time for, just as um, a little bit of a bonus. Now, I mentioned at the start that being able to communicate well can really elevate your career. And the skill of presenting is a really useful skill. And pre presenting, presentations, that's not just standing in front of an audience. It's not kind of what I do standing at the front of a classroom. Presenting could be on a one-to-one -one basis. It's about presenting information across to an audience of whoever that might be. When we think about presenting in terms of delivering to a larger audience, it is quite daunting. And if it's not something that you regularly do or regularly get the opportunity to do, it can be a really quite difficult, challenging experience. It can create quite a bit of fear. But if you can overcome that fear, if you can develop and build those skills to be able to present well, it's definitely going to help you in your career. It could open doors. It could give you opportunities. It could enable you to be taking opportunities part of projects that perhaps you wouldn't necessarily normally be part of. So a few tips around presentation. Presentations, it's daunting, it's hard. There's lots of different ways to go about it. But learn from the pros. Look for online speeches. Take the opportunity to go along to events. I've been very lucky that I have always been surrounded by very good speakers. And therefore, I've had the opportunity to see lots of different people present with different styles. And I always take those opportunities as a way to learn. What did I enjoy about that? What went well? What could I use? Filter free, I have to say, I probably have said so and um, quite a lot this morning, but try to practice delivering a speech, a presentation without using those kind of distractors of, okay, mm -hmm, um, those sort of pauses that we use or the words we use to fill pauses. Record yourself, record yourself doing a one minute off the cuff discussion, presentation, maybe talking about a hobby or something that interests you. Record yourself. How did you sound? How could you improve? What, how could you use and develop those skills that you've, you've got? Turn things into a story. So you may have noticed I talked about my family there. I talked about my family to gain engagement, to give you a story, to give you a meaning and give you some reason behind what I was telling you. Telling a story can be very engaging. And something which I definitely found useful in my early days of being a tutor was to just practice talking, just talking enthusiastically about a topic, about a subject, um, having that ability to be able to keep momentum um, through a discussion or through a topic. So learn, filter free, record, story and gush would be some tips that I would give for perhaps preparing for your first um, opportunity to present. So if you have any questions, if anyone wants to add any thoughts and ideas to the chat box, please do. Um, Gareth, I'm going to pull you back in to the conversation here. What would be, what would be some tips that you would give um, in terms of communication? Well, I mean, first I'll say some fantastic ideas there, Crystal, really great um, summary of some really important points. And I really would stress how important 
non-technical skills are increasingly becoming in accountancy and finance. Um, a lot, I'm sure, on the call will be aware of the impact of automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people use cloud accounting platforms and apps and you know, ultimately the nuts and bolts of accountancy, it's still important that you understand double entry and journals and trial balances and, you know, how to consolidate accounts. It's still important that accountants know that, but often they're not actually doing it. Often the technology is doing a lot of the, the number crunching, a lot of the bean counting. I love that slide you put up earlier, actually, Crystal. Um, but a lot of the bean counting is done by the machines now, they're done by the, the, the software. Um, which I think is great because it's actually changing the role of accountants into much more interesting, you know, much more exciting, much more impactful um, areas, you know, looking at strategic decision making, uh, managing stakeholder expectations, uh, you know, telling the market, telling the, the city, telling investors what your forecasts and plans are. But all of that requires communication. And I, I spent a lot of time, actually back in 2019, I spent a lot of time uh, talking to employers, talking to, I remember talking to Mark Farrar, the chief exec of the AAT, uh, asking what are the key skills that accountants require. And bizarrely, nobody ever really mentioned accountancy as key skills. I mean, they, it is still required, but the big skill that they always talked about was communication, the ability to take knowledge and actually well, firstly, to allow other people to understand the knowledge you have. You can imagine all the knowledge in the world in your own head is useless if you can't get it over to other people, but not just to get the information over, but to do it in a way that influences their decision making. That whole storytelling piece, I think, is so crucial, Crystal. So, um, you know, you cannot overestimate and overemphasize how important communication skills are. In a career, you know, I do very little other than communicate with colleagues, communicate with employers, communicate with learners. I mean, in terms of, you know, tips, you know, I think, you know, you talked about practice. You know, I think practice is absolutely crucial. You know, I've spent many an hour over the years standing in front of a mirror, talking to myself to practice, communicating certain messages and changing the way I describe it. I actually quite like scripting, literally word for word, sentence for sentence, what I'm going to say, particularly if I know I'm going to be in a situation where I might get a bit stressed and I might lose my thread. Um, you know, if you're in a physical environment, having some little notes is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I used to do a bit of stand up comedy and I would always write on my stand up comedy. But actually in a virtual environment, having a script is even easier because, for instance, nobody on this call knows whether I have a, a, a Word document up in front of me on my screen that I could be reading from, couldn't I? Actually, so I think in a virtual environment, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, having a, and I used to word for word script what I wanted to say, and I wouldn't necessarily then end up delivering it. You know, I might go a bit off piste. Um, but if I started getting a bit nervous and a bit stressed and a bit panicked, I could just go back to my script and almost pick it up and deliver that. Um, so I think that's, that's a, a really great idea. I think watching other people speak, I think, you know, is really useful. I, you know, I've been communicating, I've been presenting for a living for 25 years now, but I still love watching other people, whether they're colleagues of my own. Um, I always love watching you, for instance, Crystal, you're a great communicator. You know, I picked up some really great tips there from you. And um, I put in the chat box, if anyone has not heard of TED Talks, um, which are sort of little six, eight minute presentations they're all over YouTube but TED Talks are fantastic I saw a really brilliant one on the future of education recently and so yes you know some, some great tips that, that you've given but probably the biggest thing is not to let your own nervousness hold you back um, I still get nervous when I'm presenting to groups I still get nervous when I'm presenting I've got a, a I'm doing a I'm hosting a, a webinar tomorrow morning a, an economic summit tomorrow I'm hosting it and there are currently 392 registrations for it, which is making me feel a bit jittery at the prospect of having to present in front of so many people, but I'm going to script out what I'm going to say. I'm going to practice it in advance. And actually, I've learned over the years to turn my own nerves into nervous excitement. 
and to not let the butterflies in my stomach hold me back from doing something. You know, for me, actually, I love doing things now where they make me really nervous because I know I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I know I'm developing. I know I'm doing something that perhaps 10 years ago I wouldn't even have dreamed of doing. But yet tomorrow morning I'm presenting to nearly 400 people on a, a major East of England economic summit. You know, 10 years ago I wouldn't have thought that would even be possible. So I think embracing nervousness, I think, is, is really good. But there's a great TED talk uh, by somebody called Amy Cuddy on power posing doing and I, I, some of you may have seen this it looks like you've seen it crystal but i i still before i do big speeches i do wonder woman and if that it doesn't mean anything to you watch amy cuddy power, um, ted talk on power posing great way of kind of building up your own adrenaline and building up your own confidence in yourself uh yeah so you know fantastic presentation crystal lovely thanks gareth um and yeah, great. I've, I mean, I've definitely learned a lot from watching you as well. And I absolutely share that nervousness as well. How do you build your confidence on speaking in front of a crowd of people? Um, I saw someone pop that in the chat box. I absolutely appreciate that. So I was a very, very shy person until probably late 20s. I would not speak in a meeting. Um, I was very nervous about even having a conversation with someone. If I could be that bean counter in the back room, I absolutely was. Um, but I spent a lot of time forcing myself to step outside of my comfort zone. I still get nervous. As Gareth mentioned there, having a power pose, something that you do to prepare yourself first, to give yourself a boost, really, really helpful. Um, and practice. So when I first started teaching, very nervous about standing in front of a class I would spend an hour in the morning practicing presenting no one in front of me I'd just practice talking about a topic and that would then get the flow going so that when I got into the classroom I could then just talk and carry on what I'd been doing earlier that day um, so practice doesn't necessarily have to be in front of people to build your confidence it can be on your own and take opportunities put yourself in positions where perhaps you don't want to be so if someone says, could you present this? Could you do this? Could you lead this meeting or talk at it? Even though every ounce of you wants to say no, say yes, give it a try. Um, and generally audiences are very forgiving and very nice. They're all human. They've all been in that situation. And I mean, I'm very lucky that I surround myself with an awful lot of people that if I go off track or if I get stuck, I've generally got someone who's got my back who will step in, um, ask questions, and chat is there anyone that you could have with you that could support you as well in early situations where perhaps you're having your first go at presenting um, but thank you all for joining this morning conscious of time um, that we are at the end it's been great that you've all joined this first session um, of our attitude festival and hopefully you're all going to join us for many of the sessions across the week i'm running a few of the lunchtime ones um, and some evening sessions as well. Really looking forward to some conversations on um, digital technologies, data analytics, and also looking at where the AAT qualification is gonna go next year. Um, so yeah, any questions, pop them in the chat box. If not, look forward to seeing you all at some other sessions later this week. Fantastic. Thank you, Crystal. And thank you, everyone, for, for coming along. That's been a, a really great session. And I'm, I'm the same as you, Crystal. Nobody ever believes it, but I'm really shy. Um, I'm a classic introvert, and I've had to work so hard over the years to portray an image. It's a bluff. It's a total bluff. It's a total front of almost extrovert confidence, which I, I, I rarely feel inside, but I've got so good at portraying it, people assume I'm hugely confident and very comfortable in front of crowds of people, but I've just learned to turn that nervous lack of confidence actually on its head and turn it into a real benefit. You know, I always think in your head, because nerves is exactly the same thing as excitement, it's just adrenaline. So I've learned to reprogram how I interpret nervousness. I actually get, I just, it's, for me, it's excitement and I get really excited and really psyched up for doing stuff. Yeah, absolutely appreciate that. Feel the fear and do it anyway. That has been a Great phrase work. for a long time. <laughs> <laughs>